What are you an expert at? If you have a podcast, chances are your show features your area of expertise. But how much do you really know about podcast production? My clients often thank me for making their shows sound great. But in my opinion, the main benefit I provide for all of my production clients is time. Time to do what they are experts at. Time to grow their businesses. Time to focus and not stress out trying to do the technical production work that isn't their area of expertise. If you have a podcast or want to start one and you're ready to save three hours or more each week to focus on the stuff you're an expert at, I'd love to do all of your editing, mixing, mastering, and show distribution for you so that you can focus on growing your community and business. You can find out more at emeraldcitypro.com slash services. Hello, everybody, and welcome. I'm your host, Danny Osmond. If you love podcasts, if you are passionate about your business, if you want to create and grow a podcast that will connect you with your ideal customers, and you want access to education, to resources, and to other amazing business leaders and podcasters who can help you do it better every single day, then this is the podcast for you. Today, we're going to talk about persistence, which is a skill that you have to have when you are creating a podcast. You have to be consistent, and to be consistent, you need to persist. You need to keep going every week, week in and week out. There's always some measure of success in persistence, but giving up offers none. Regardless of the outcome, persisting through tough times and overwhelming odds becomes part of the victory. So here are just a few reasons to persist. Persistence, first of all, gets results. Few things in life worth achieving are gained without persistence. Nearly all successful people we look up have a long, hard trail of failures and several challenges behind them, through which they persisted. Had they given up along the way, they would have experienced failure just before their breakthrough occurred. The harder you work, the luckier you get. Now, the second reason, persistence sets you apart from everyone else. Anyone can quit. Quitting is easy. That's the easy way out. Persisting puts you in a whole different class on a whole different level. Third reason, persistence builds character. Giving up takes no effort whatsoever. Giving up gives one a false sense of relief that ultimately feels more like defeat. Any growth of muscle or character requires resistance training. It takes courage and strong character to persist. And in persisting, your character becomes even stronger. Now, the fourth reason, persistence always offers some measure of success. Just by hanging in there, you've accomplished more than most. But in quitting, there is no success. Abraham Lincoln, a man all too familiar with failure, said, If you are resolutely determined to accomplish something, then the thing is more than half done already. Always bear in mind that your resolution to succeed is more important than any other thing. But when the bills are piling up and everyone is telling you to hang it up and get a real job, it's hard to persist, right? How do you maintain persistence in the face of so much apparent failure and resistance? Well, here are five strategies for boosting persistence. Number one, believe in yourself and what you have to offer. This requires a realistic but optimistic view of yourself, not to be confused with flippant arrogance. Sylvester Stallone was rejected by more than 600 casting agents before developing his Rocky screenplay. His first film took in $117 million in 1976 dollars and made him more than $5 million. If you have something worthwhile and valuable to give others, keep believing in yourself and never quit. Here's a quote from David J. Schwartz in The Magic of Thinking Big. Belief is the thermostat that regulates what we accomplish in life. A person is a product of his own thoughts. Believe big. Adjust your thermostat forward. Launch your success offensive with honest, sincere belief that you can succeed. Believe big and grow big. Now here's strategy number two. Keep trying new things. Maybe you're not sure yet what your product or service is, but you desire successful entrepreneurship desperately. 
then keep trying new things. The Wright brothers experienced thousands of failed experiments before getting it right. Discover your niche, experiment. As the founder of IBM, Thomas J. Watson said, the way to succeed is to double your failure rate. Now, the third strategy, redefine failure. View minor failed experiments as learning experiences. Now you know one more way not to succeed. Instead, view quitting as failure. As long as you persist, you haven't failed. Strategy number four, when you fall, keep getting up. If you've ever watched a baby learn to walk, they fall a thousand times before they can walk. You're no infant, but your business may still be in its infancy. Expect to fall, trip, stumble, but keep getting up. And soon you'll find that your business is not only walking, but running. And finally, the fifth strategy, don't listen to naysayers. When Mark Victor Hansen and Jack Canfield wrote the Chicken Soup for the Soul series, they were rejected by 140 publishers. Publishers told them the book wouldn't sell. Those publishers were professionals. They're supposed to know what they're talking about, right? But when the two authors finally landed a contract with a publisher willing to take a risk, their book sold over 100 million copies. Don't listen to naysayers. Instead, find and spend time with those who believe in you, support you, and encourage you. Persistence is a key ingredient for success. So keep at it. Don't give up. Persist because success is right around the corner. So there you have it. If you're ready to make a real change in your business in 2019, start today by first of all, subscribing to this show on Apple or Stitcher or Android or Google Podcasts or whatever. Number two, please leave me a review. It's really helpful in getting the word out to other people. Apple likes it when people rate and review shows and it puts it up in search results and things like that. And number three, share it with a friend, a colleague, a coworker who you think would enjoy my episodes. So that's it. I look forward to seeing you next week in the next episode.